welcome back to LSB Designs, I'm Laura. Today we are going to be making some bookmarks using this lovely little mould. So before we get started, make sure you give your mould a nice clean just to make sure there's no dust or glitter, any tiny little particles like that in there. So now that's nice and clean and in that I'm going to be putting some tattoos. So these are the tattoos that I've got that I'm using today. So, not particularly big but plenty big enough to go in here. So I've cut them down to size already so I know that they are all going to fit into my moulds. So what I'm going to do is just peel off the plastic protective layer, turn it over and place it down into my mould. Now you need to be careful when you're placing these down because once they're down they aren't coming back up again. So you need to be careful where you're going to place them. So that's my feather. So these tattoos are from a pack that I just bought off Amazon. They're not very expensive. You get quite a lot of them in a pack. So I've rubbed them all down so they're not going anywhere. So now what I'm going to do is I've just got some plain water in my bottle. Just adjust that back. So just plain water in my bottle and I'm just going to put a little bit onto my finger and give it a rub. There's nothing to stop you from using a makeup sponge or part of a kitchen sponge or some uh, cotton roll, yeah, some cotton pads or Q-tips or just some kitchen paper, anything like that if you want to use that rather than use your fingers. See, that one is ready already. So I'm just going to carefully take that back off. That one seems to be ready. So that's them all up. And now I'm just going to use a small bit of paper, very gently, I'm just going over it. Now, because I'm tired, and I've not paid proper attention but I thought I'd keep it in anyway just so you can see how you can rectify this if you make the same mistake I've done. These two perfectly fine nothing wrong with them. What I've 
forgot about was the fact that these three have writing on. And once we've filled them up with resin, the writing's going to be the wrong way around. So what I'm going to do with these three is put a thin layer of clear resin on the top of them. And then once when that's hardened, I'm going to flip them over and then I can do the rest of the colour design behind them. But I can't do that. with. I can't just do what I was planning to do originally. So all is not lost. I don't have to take them out, scrub them out and lose the the three mold, the three tattoos that I've put in there. But I am going to have to adjust what I'm going to do. So I'm they will still need a top coat because they will have the ridge because the resin obviously isn't going to get filled up to the top. So I can still do what get the effect that I was looking for it's just going to have to be in a slightly different order now what I was planning to do and I will do with these two only is I'm going to add some glitter glue so what I've got are these stickles glitter glues from Ranger so this one is icicle uh, this one is turquoise this one is lavender this one is grapefruit and this one is platinum so I won't be using them all right now just because as I said I've messed up because I wasn't paying enough attention but what I am going to do is put some glitter into these two so I'm going to start off with the lavender and just put some on top of my rose So that's the lavender. I'm going to try and use a tiny, tiny bit of the icicle on the moon. Just to give that a bit of sparkle. And I'm also going to use it on the two little circles there. the turquoise on this lotus flower now it doesn't matter that I'm covering up the lines of the tattoo because we're going to be viewing it from the other side so we'll still see the lines there and I think I'm going to use the platinum on these leaves it seems to have got a bit of a clog clock there somewhere there we go and on the feather I think I'm going to use 
the grapefruit on this top bit of the feather. And then I'm going to use the icicle, not on every feather, just some of them. There we go. So I'm going to cover that, leave it overnight, and I'll be back tomorrow to put the resin on once that's all dried up. See you in a minute. Hello, I'm back again. So these have been left to dry overnight, so now that they are nice and dry. So I've gone ahead and mixed my resin up. So today I am using the Dipon Epoxy Plus 3D. So I've got that mixed up and the colours that I'm going to be using for these two are Arteza uh, in Periwinkle Glow and Arteza again in Lavender. Now for these three I am just going to put a small amount of clear resin on just to coat them I don't want a lot I don't want a thick layer uh, just enough to cover them up Let's give that a bit of a tilt There we go, and they, all the bottoms are covered now, so that's those layers protected. So they will still need a top coat on because, as I said before, resin shrinks, so it'll leave a dip, so it'll go up at the edges, like that. 
that will need to be smoothed out. Okay. I'm just going to start off with just one little scoop. And see what kind of colour that gives us because I don't want it to be too dark a colour. to make sure your mica powder is really well mixed in because you don't want any lumps of mica in there. There we go, so this is the uh, Periwinkle Glow. And a really beautiful iridescent colour and that one is the Lavender. There we go. So I'm going to let that cure and then I will be back with the next step. Hi everyone, so these are now set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them out. So these two will just need top coats on them on the other side to seal in the tattoos and the other three I'm going to flip over, put back in and put the glitter on. So let's 
start with the two that are coming out. Oh, it's lovely. So that glitter just gives it that extra bit of sparkle. Really pretty. Use that one. And the same with that. It's come out really pretty. And you can see, you can still see the lines. But if you look at the rows, you can still see the lines. So didn't matter that we went over. And the same on the lotus flower. Didn't matter that we went over the lines on the other side because the lines are on this side as well so that you can still see it all. So there's a bit of overhang which I'll trim off but nothing to worry about. So and now these, I just want to take these out carefully because they're only very thin. So these will still need a top coat like they will. Because I don't know you can see it's got the raised lip, so that needs to be sorted. So I'm just going to flip it over and put it straight back in. So it's a little bit of jiggling just to get the bit through. It doesn't want to go. Try that end first. I can get that end in first and then tuck that one back in. Again, it's only very thin. So now I've flipped those over, so now I can put my glitter on and once that's dry I'll be able to put my colours on. So for one I'm going to use the grapefruit. This one, I'm using the lavender. And the final one, I'm going to use platinum. Let's 
stuck a little bit because I'm just going to get a pin. All I'm doing is pushing that pin down and hopefully that should be enough to free it up. Yeah, it's coming out easier now. There we go. So again, I'm going to leave them overnight just so that they can thoroughly dry and then I'll be able to make my resin up, top coat the two that have come out and put a colour on the back of these three. I'll see you shortly. So it's the next day and the glitter is all dry. So I'm going to be using the Arteza Light Plum, the Arteza Ice Blue and also the Arteza Bright Gold Mica Powders for the backgrounds of these three. Uh, I'm using the same resin as I used before and I'm just splitting it into three portions. So two into the little cups and leaving some remaining in the jug. So this is the Light Plum. It's got a lovely iridescent shine to it. And this is the ice blue. And last but not least, the bright gold. And please be careful when you're using mica powders as you don't want to be breathing anything in. Mica powder is not good for your lungs, which is why you should always wear your PPE. So that's your respiratory mask and your gloves. Uh, you want to make sure that you give it a really good mix, not too fast because you don't want to add lots of bubbles in, but you need to mix it well enough so that the mica is well incorporated into the resin because you don't want lumps of mica left in there because they can float up and ruin your design. So I've not poured it all in, I've just poured so much in and I'm going to give it time to settle. So that's the bright gold going in now and I'm just going back and topping up the other two colours, the ice blue and the light plum. And there's a bit of something in there, so a hair, so I'm just using some tweezers to get it out. It would probably be a hair from my dog. Oh, she does love to share her hairs, even though she's not allowed in my studio, but I seem to permanently be covered in fluffy hairs from her. So I'm just using my little stylus just to make sure that the colour's gone all the way to the edges, including around the little nib that stands up to create the hole in the bookmark. Uh, as you can see, I do have a bit of overflow there. So the easiest way to rectify that is by getting a piece of kitchen paper and just pressing it lightly over the top and it'll just soak up a little bit of the excess resin and it's a lot easier than trying to scoop it out with a spoon the 
more you can tidy up now, the easier it'll be when it comes to demold because you won't have as much, if any, overflow to have to deal with that then requires um, cutting off. Uh, I'm just using a long, a long necked lighter just to go across and pop any bubbles. I don't want to use my kit, my big torch, um, the one that you would use for doing creme brulee, things like that, because I don't want to damage the mould. <clears throat> the flame on those is very hot and the last thing I want to do is damage them. So now they're ready. they've all set up nice and hard and I'm ready to unmould and then they can be top coated. Now, as you can see with this gold one, unfortunately, it's not worked. The gold has managed to run underneath. I've, I've pressed them down as much as I could, um, but the gold's managed to run underneath um, and spoil it. Now, it, it's run underneath with the plum, but that one seems to be okay because it has actually just left a ridge around the edge um, and hasn't actually covered the writing, so I can still top coat it in with clear resin and it should be absolutely fine. Now, as you can see that with the blue one, there is um, some overflow still. So what I'm doing now is using <clears throat> my deburring tool um, and just taking the excess off with that before I top coat it. So I've got my uh, my clear resin all mixed up and I'm just going to put a small amount on each one to start with. I can always add a bit more if necessary but I don't want the resin to flow over the edges, I just want it to dome. So it gives a nice finish to the top. So again, with the stylus, just gently working the resin to the edges so that it completely covers the top without going over the edge. Now, as you can see with the blue one, the edge at that side is very thin um, from when I put the first layer in to cover the uh, tattoos. Um, and I'm just trying to prop it up because it, it's running over the edge. And I'm hoping I can still try and save it. You want to get down level, eye level with your, your resin work when you're doming something because you want to be able to look over the surface of it 
because it'll show you if you've got any missed patches, any bald patches. You can see clearly then whether you've got a nice level coat over the top of it. So it's really not working with the blue one. So I'm attempting to salvage it by popping it back into the mould and to be able to put this top coat on. So it's not the easiest thing trying to get these back into the moulds um, because of the little knob sticking up for the hole. It's quite difficult to try and manoeuvre it round there. You, you have to get it most of the way in with wiggling it around and then you need to try and get hold of that little nub and, and just give it a wiggle and a pull um, to try and get it to come up through the hole. So anyway, that's what I've, I've tried to do with that, um, just to hold the resin in while it sets up. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't really work out um, and I'm, the clear resin ends up going underneath. Um, so it's not worked out as I hoped it would and I wasn't able to, sell, to salvage it. So here you are. I'll leave you with some finished results. And don't forget, if you like what you've seen, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell because then you'll be notified every time I upload a new video and leave a nice comment. That would be great. Until the next video, have a great night and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.